Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man. Steady Craft. In today's video, we're going to try to do us a little sculpting. Before we can even get into all the sculpting and all that stuff, I'd like to start with me some kind of a concept and idea so that I'm not just, you know, willy nilly. I'm probably going to be willy nilly the whole thing anyway, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm usually going by the seat of my pants. But uh, let's just, for now, let's get us some little ideas going. I went to the dollar store and got me some fresh notebooks. I got me two of them. And these are one subject notebooks. So that way, you know, you can keep things organized. You know, this is only going to be about one particular subject. All right. I'm going to use the green one today. And the reason how come I use a one dollar notebook is honestly because... That way I would use it. Because if you get me a real fancy notebook that's got that real good quality thick paper, it's got that little uh, surface texture to it, ain't got no lines on it that's just all blank, then uh, that's a notebook that I ain't never gonna use. Because it's such a fancy notebook that I feel like I got to put really good fancy things in it. All right. And everything we going to be doing today, uh, let's just, you know, go into it. I get so many emails. People saying, Crap man, I want to sculpt. I want to do cast and mold and I'm afraid to do it because I don't think it's going to turn out how my mind pictures it. Let me just tell you this. I don't think I have ever done a single thing in my life that has turned out exactly how I wanted it to. But we just compromise and we just be happy with it. You know, try to make a YouTube video. So we're staring at a blank notebook, and that can be intimidating. But look, it's got lines on it already, and it didn't cost but about a dollar. So, you know, let's don't freeze up. Let's just get with it. It's like they say, if you froze up, nothing shows up on the paper. You know what I'm saying? I like to use the little precise uh, pens right there. I don't know how y'all feel about them. But I will go ahead and tell you one secret that I have learned that y'all might think I'm crazy. See that? Da, 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 like that. You would be surprised how much that little weight on top of it would throw you off. So look, go ahead and just take that. Set it over there. Now we got complete freedom to go to sketching. And I guess I'm hung up on animals and things because I said, you know, I started to think about a frog, a toad, or something. I like to start with the eyes a lot of time. So, you know, let's just say, oh my goodness, we off to a wonderful start. Look at the details in this. All right. So how does a, let's see, I don't know. I'm for real, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. We're not trying to be anatomically correct here because, you know, at the end of the day, you could just say whatever it is that you're drawing was radioactive or something and it changed the way it looked. This came from Chernobyl. I like to write the date at the top of all my little sketches. Then, you know, I can go back to something from, you know, three years ago and say, why come I never did anything with that, but, you know? Or maybe I could say, it's a good thing I never did anything with that. That's kind of crazy. Well, that's some of the air fit the one mess right there. Let's see. Even though I ain't 100% decided on what we're going to do, uh, I got a pretty good idea. And besides that, I'm going to go ahead and start rolling up the clay uh, because we're using epoxy cup today. It's a two part uh, mixture. Y'all see me use this before. Let's see what happens. What happens? that y'all might can hear the little raindrops hitting my uh, my metal roof it's been off and on raining today regular sculpting 
automatically right out the box smooth but for me it all comes down to uh, my comfort level is that I like something that I can just let it cure on its own and I get a surface that I can work with and I'm very comfortable with subtractive modeling more so than adding on to a big piece of clay and just having a big old thing that's just a, a big possibility to mess up. As far as sculpting tools, uh, don't let that overwhelm you. You know, a lot of times you buy these things and it might come with a big set. But as you get to going on this, you're going to find that you usually wind up using the same ones over and over. And if you just had to limit it to just a few, these would be the ones that I would use. You know, right there. But remember the main tool, you know, you got your little finger finger right there. One thing that I have never done, and I don't know why I've never done it, it just, I saw a really good friend of mine do this recently. You know, I always just be sculpting something in my hand and holding on to it and then, you know, trying not to mess something up while I'm working on one side or the other. Put this thing on a platform. You know, why are you sculpting it? Um, this is real thin, right? But, you know probably a little bit too thin. You could just take your little action figure stand. I just went ahead and rolled me out a whole bunch of eyeballs just because I don't really know. Set that to the side. I really did not want to do a video about this because my way of sculpting is just so crazy. You know, most people would just do everything in one go, but this is just the way I'm comfortable doing it. So, you know. So this is what happened. I got to going on this. I said, I'm going to make all the little parts separately. That way I can come in and modify sand, flatten things out so that they'll fit real snug together. I wanted it to have uh, somewhat of a professional look. And for me, I'm always more comfortable if I can sand things than if I have to get it smooth from the get go. I got the eyes, you know, separately, and uh, I like them eyes that bug out like that. Hold on, see this? Let me do this right there. Turn them around. Well, anyway, and then I also made me, just for the fun of it, uh, that little head right there, but it remind me of, uh, don't quite look like a, a toad frog. It remind me of that uh, turtle. Look like he'd be on the never ending star or something. He just hanging out looking for people. And so what happened was I made all these parts all right yesterday. I let them sit out here in the workshop and cure overnight. And then I went inside and I was uh, sketching, you know. I said, I know pretty much I want that style right there. And I said, I kind of know how I want the uh, head to look something, something like that right there. And instead of having a straight, uh, torso like that I said it would be neat if it just kind of flared out like that right there and then the little arm to kind of hang down I said that would be kind of interesting to me and I was just sitting at the kitchen table I said why don't I just take me a big glob of clay and just start experimenting with it I got the super scope out and 
peeled me off some and just started kneading it up, kneading it, kneading it. And I said, well, before I work on the body, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of rough me out all the stuff that I already have out here and just kind of build onto it, you know, make it like an example prototype looking thing. And then I just wound up sculpting it, you know, how to sculpt it like that. And I got to looking at it, you know. I said, well, it's, I, you know, it's not professional looking, but something about it, I just like this so much, you know, because I think it's just it got a whimsical, uh, kind of a round, handmade look to it, you know, it ain't very refined. And I started liking that better than what I was going for on that other one. I said, well, let me see. I said, let me take and uh, make me a little head, see how that looks. I said, you know, I kind of like that. And I turned them eyes that way. That's not right. Let's see. So I took and kind of roughed me out a little body out of Scuppy. Put that right there. And I said, you know, it's different than what I was going for, but it just has a clay feel to it. That I said, you know, I've never really done anything like that. It, uh, excuse me. Oh, also, let's see. I think I did, yeah. I did that. I was doing this right there and just making them arms look more funny. That's something like that. But anyway, this is going to be kind of ridiculous now because I straight made all that other stuff out of a Paxis cup. Now I'm going to have to show people that... I went and made it out of scuppy, but there's an example here, an illustration that I want to tell y'all. I was getting way too uh, technical, too rigid, overcomplicating things is what I was doing. And I said, you know what? Sometimes I gotta switch to the low tech things. They're going to take the pressure off. Let me show y'all some of the techniques I used on this. Some of the places where it might look like a belt on it, you know, I actually, uh, instead of making that flat and then wrapping it around, see, I thought I was going to be doing the belt like that, but y'all know what I did? I just basically straight up took and did this all as one layer. See that? That's just one thick slab. Then you ain't got to worry about, you know, trying to uh, to blend it together on the backside because that's always is the tricky part is, you know, making that go together. You can take clay and you can roll it flat and they make these things right here to where, you know, you can take these little things off and make it uh and it's only going to be that thick right there, see? But if you take this thing off, and then you can make it real thin. And it's just only going to be whatever the thickness is of that. However, don't go out and buy you one of these, all right? Just get you some playing cards like that. Snip. Sometimes it might look like I'm doing things to be silly, but these cars are slippery you know that wax coating and all that you go ahead and just take you however many cars on one side and then that many cars on the other side and then you know just get you something that you got to roll with And that should give you a pretty uniform consistency right there. Another reason I like this fire and scuppy is you can cut right on through it. It maintains them clean lines like that. And I started to assemble it and felt like, you know, hey, he's starting to kind of have some kind of personality to me. What I would think is, you know, based on his belt buckle, that he had a life of adventure previously. That, you know, he has left that behind him now. He's trying to settle down. He don't have time for little miscellaneous misbehaviors and things like that. He just is, you know, ready 
to be serious about life now. Any good advice, he'd be ready to hear, but he ain't going to be, he ain't going to be playing around with no criminal activities, nothing like that, see? That's what it looks like to me. Uh, when you was a kid doing this stuff, you weren't thinking about, am I going to be able to sell this? Are people going to like it? They're going to critique it? And that's what I was at the kitchen table doing that. And I just had fun, and that's what happened. Still got to come up with me some little chest details, though. I don't know, maybe a little V neck and some, some armor coming down. I probably need to do a bandolier or something like that. A little, you know, a little bandolier coming in. Maybe it can hold a little 35 millimeter rolls of film. Maybe he's a photographer now. Anyway. Oh, by the way, since this video of Catawampus in a way and everything's all messed up and did not go the way I originally planned, let me just give you a little bonus trick. So you take a, a card deck and you just mix them up, whatever. You just say, pick a card and do not show it to me, but only you look at it. All right, so they're going to pick a card. And then why are they doing that? You sit here and act like you're organizing your deck. You just, you know, straighten everything back up. Why you do this? You look at that bottom card, all right. So 10 of diamonds. And you tell them, I want you to put that, just slide it over here. And they will. And then you say, all right, look, I ain't even going to pick your card up. I'm just going to do this. All right. And then what you do is you take that whole deck right in front of them. Do not flip it over. Go ahead and split it in half. When you go to shuffle it, all right, remember the cards on the bottom. You let them first couple of cards drop down, all right? Do this. But you gotta do that real fast though. All right, are they going to notice something that's going on? So you just shuffle that deck. If you want to, you could uh, mix it up some more, do some other things. So then you say, all right, I'm going to find your car. And you start to look in here like you really, really concentrating on something. And the more little details that you can put in your tricks, you know, the more that probably throw people off, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're just looking through here. And then, you see the little card right there? What that would tell you, since that's the one that was on the bottom that you memorized earlier, it tells you that that's going to be that card right there. All right. And you say, I think I got your card here. Let me see. And you just do some things like you feel it. And you say, yeah, I could tell by the, uh, the thermal registration or something. Just make something up. But you know, you say, is yes, that your card? And they're going to say, how did you do that? And you say, the first rule of card trees is I cannot tell you how to do card trees. Unless you're doing a YouTube video about it, then you can show how to do it. Then it's okay. Hopefully this video was a little bit unexpected. And hopefully you have been inspired to do some creative things. Make some clay thing, get you a notebook sketch going. Do y'all like my mustache? I love y'all and keep steady crafting.